M0FXB Yesu FTX-1 Optima. Today we're looking at the rear unit to see if we can actually separate it and still use it. So if you buy the field version, you just get the front end, okay? And it's 6 watt, and when it's DC supplied, it's 10 watt. There is a, a USB connector there, and you can actually charge the battery that's connected on the back of this. But the question is, well, okay, what if I get the 100 watt version? Can I still disconnect it and use the front end? And it does actually allow you 50 watts on VHF and UHF. So take a look at the, the manual here. We'll look at a couple of things that are described. Uh, so if you look on the right hand side here, it says FTX Optima high power output of 100 watts allows full scale fixed station operation. And then this is the key bit here. Let me just zoom in on it. It says the panel can be removed from the main unit and attached to a commercially available stand, ETC, to operate at your preferred angle. So they're banking on people making, I would say, and this is my sort of, you know, speculation, people making stands that are going to hold this, this, this unit, okay, whether it's the front end or the back end. But I am really impressed with what they've done with the back end because it actually does look like a, an ordinary radio. It doesn't look like an add-on. Take a look. Now, I, I just love what they, I love what they've done here. This is like looking at the back of, uh, of say my, I don't know, any other base station shack in the box I've got, say the ASU 897. It's got the standard square connector that you can see here. You've got an antenna here for two meters and 70. No duplexer required, quite common. Then you've got here, you know, your tuner, jack, and it says the extension, I'm guessing that's speaker, yeah? And then you've got two antennas. You've got antenna one and two um, for HF. Whoa, I mean, that's brilliant. And then the ground, and you can see it steps down because this isn't a massive unit. I would say it's it's smaller than smaller than the not as wide as the FTX sorry as the 991 not quite as wide um, and probably steps down a bit but if you look at the actual 991 it's not actually I keep saying actually it's a <laughs> it's um it's not actually oh my god it's not a big radio the 991 for what it does and it packs a punch. So um, I'm loving this. Now, that's the main point of this video, and that's what I wanted to show you, and you've got this big fan at the back, that you can remove the unit. Now, what I'd like to see, if someone else finds it before me, is how long we can buy these cables, because it looks like the cables are going to be quite short, and then, yeah, you can unclip it, and then you'll be able to just angle it up and down to your desired thing. But what we really want is to put the, mate, the base unit somewhere else and just have the head unit mounted somewhere. And I'm pretty sure that Yesu would have figured that one out many years ago. So it's that extension kit. What's the part number? What's the extension kit called? John Crook, please tell us. Uh, we want to know, but it's obviously a shack in the box. Um, and if you buy the Optima, it's got a tuner. And to all the people that are saying, um, this is too expensive what are they comparing it to you know that's the key thing here there's nothing like this because if you buy any other shack in the box and i'm just trying to think is there one really the only one i can think of is the 991 there is nothing else like it well i can't get the front of the 991 and remove it and put it somewhere also the 991 hasn't got the the same sophisticated uh, display and all the latest sort of filtering that you get with, uh, you know, that you get with the 991. Although, don't get me wrong, the 991 works great. I love using it. It's easy to use. I love using it. I mean, it's it's a bit menu driven, but <laughs> aren't they all? So let's just have a quick, quick look around the manual, see if we can see anything else we like. Because I'm on my PC now. And the other day when I did that, I was on my phone. But I have to keep saying this. Well done, Yesu. You have done some amazing, amazing work on this. I really believe that. If I didn't, I would say so. And I am I am impressed with what they've done here. Um, the way they've got all this into a, a beautiful shack in the box here. Just scrolling through, just going to pick out things that stand out. 
So just here on the side, if I could read that a bit clearer, it would be nice. Uh, looks like, yeah, you've got your type USB-C, your phone jack there. And key, mic jack, yeah, it looks like a standard sort of mic jack. Uh, I'm just whizzing through. There's your, one of your sub menus, let's call it. Uh, of course, you've definitely got PMG mode. There's all your buttons on top. Let's just zoom in a bit. We're going a bit too much there. As you can see, group mode, SDX. Someone described that correctly because some people say it's a preamp. Some people just say it's uh, it enhances the sound, but that doesn't mean it amplifies it, does it? So if someone explain exactly what it is. PMG, we know what that is. You've got lots of little bar graphs bouncing up and down. Uh, at the moment, with the current gear that I've got, you can hear two at the same time. It goes up and down with little graphs with the activity. Very nice touch. It is C4 FM, PDM mode, v VFO memory button. It does say split there. I'm just looking at the top. So, okay, nothing, nothing new. I did see a good image of the actual menu structure. Some people have said to me, well, how does the GPS plug in? Well, it's got a little, you know, a little GPS there. Is it 2.5 or 3.5? Not sure yet, but what I am seeing is you've got DC input and USB. They're calling it USB PD, Papa Delta. You've got two ways of powering this. So that, and I get that, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, I don't get it, but I do get it. <laughs> it's nice to have both. And obviously, USB-C, isn't that like the, the new rules now that all these devices sh should have USB-C? And it is showing there that when you're charging, that the device blinks, look. Red blinks, charging. Okay, no blinking means it's complete. You're clearly seeing here how the battery goes in and clicks to the right and it goes into this. And that reminds me really of my ICOM 706, that reminds me of. Okay. Yeah, like in that. And look at all the connectors here. You know, this is with the, the Optima not connected or the SPA1. We're just looking now here. Um, so you've got the subdial, it says lock, I'm literally reading the front, volume, squelch, it does say DSP, sub-DSP, uh, quick, quick memory, is that QMB, clarifier, back, fast, and fine, so if you click that, it tunes faster, and subdial, so it looks AF, RF, you've got two independent, um, that's another new thing I didn't know we had, You've got two independent AF, RF, squelch, AF, RF, squelch on both sides. It's really going to feel like a true dual bander. Then you've got DISP and the, the main function button. That's going to get used a lot, isn't it? It's face facts. That one, lovely. And if you look here, that's where your SD card goes. You've also got the mounting bracket at the back. See it at the back, the sort of camera type holder and underneath. Very easy to mount this device. And... The, the knob, actually, the VFO, the large, it looks very similar to my the one I'm just spinning it here on my 991. Uh, that looks pretty good. And so, yeah, of course, we're firmware, software, programming. They're going to have an ADMS. Let me guess the number, 20. ADMS 20 is my guess um, for this. And then, of course, RT systems will be all over this already. What I love about RT systems, because I, I will have RT systems, but I also love using Chirp and I like using the Yaesu software. I like it all. Um, it's the passion. That's the thing. They You can tell. Yaesu, RT systems, Icon. These people, you know, John Crook, they are passionate about their product and that really shows through. And yeah, I'm just seeing the mag button there as well. The grouping, the you know, that, the, the newest version of the grouping is going to be on this. Yeah, and the X button, I see that there as well. The actual knobs look very similar to the knobs that are on my uh, 991. They, they, they look very, very similar. Now we're looking here at the back when the battery is disconnected. And you can see there, antenna, and I'm sure these are BNC. Antenna HF50 at the top. Antenna 2 meters 70 at the bottom, and then you've got your connectors there. 
Is that connector also going to, I think, my guess is that that connector is also going to connect that tuner one, is uh, is also going to connect to the SPA one. I don't know because I haven't got one, but you can see the little sliding thing there where the battery slots in. So uh, yeah, that's your field unit. And of course, you're going to get the full color display there. And if you look, you can stack it on top. You can do it side by side. It doesn't have to, you know, you choose. You, know, you you have it how you like it and it's one touch one touch multi view and you've got the span there you can choose 3ds you can choose the speed it's it's all very touch 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 you can tap i'm pretty sure you can tap the frequency you can change the frequency you've got your att there ipo dnf adc touch 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 you know that's 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 pretty cool there's, I, I mean, the 3DS, I don't know what it is. I, it just, it just, although I don't, I don't actually think it's bad, but it just doesn't do it for me. It looks great on a TV monitor, uh, in color in the background, but I just, I just like the, the classic Icom 7300 look. And there's your microphone. Yeah. And we've seen these microphones so many times. You've got your usual change of step and you've got your comp settings there. You look at your different filters there, SSB mode, CW mode, RTTY, PSK data. Information displayed on the screen. That's your couple of meters there. Center cursor fix. And you got your D mode there, center. And you can see there with these different ones. They should have done it in color, really, this manual. Oh, well, maybe they want to make us wait until we buy one. Or oh, that's the waterfall type, basically the icon type. And you've got the multi display. So I am teasing everyone a bit. A few more weeks to wait yet. I mean, I think these are on the ocean. I think these are on way. And for those that don't know the price in the UK, it's 1599 for the field unit, the head unit, and 2059 for the, the whole lot, the Optima, which does have a tuner inside it. And there's our classic menu structure that we're seeing with the FTDX10, the 710, and I've got the, um, what you call it, I've got the 101. Okay, classic menu, all the selections there that we're used to. You will enjoy, I find it very nice to use. I'm just showing you some snapshots of it here. And, and you're seeing that it's still got dual display, even though you've got the full menu showing. And of course you can do air band, marine band. And PMI, I'm not saying it transmits on any of that, but you'll be able to receive, I think it goes up to about 470 megahertz. And that's your selection where you can change all the colors. I do love PMG. There's your PMG look. I, I do think that's a really cool feature. And it's so easy to put something in PMG. You tune to it, you hold your finger down, it's there. And I'm pretty sure to remove it is the same thing. You select it, hold your finger down, and it removes it. It's got your digital filter pass band higher or lower, and it just sort of displays it on screen. There you go. Is that IF shift? There you go. You've got your contour there, notch, contour, so yeah, just so much, I just, so much to look at, I don't know where to stop, and I just, there's just so much. You know, dedicated buttons for DNR. I can see antenna selections there. TX power, attenuator, you know, the colors. No, oh, it looks like it records messages. Transmit and record messages. And I think this is the memories where you play them back. Now we're in some sort of CW territory here, all the different settings you've got. Kia, break in. CW speed, CW pitch, BK delay, and so on. And if you're into CW, that's all going to be very important to you. 
We've got this CW indicator here that's going to help you tune in and fine tune to those stations. There's your different modes there. Press and hold the NW mode key. The operation mode selection screen appears. So there you are. And, you, and, and of course, we've got data modes. And we're going to need CTCSS because this is 2 meters and 70. We're going to be accessing our repeaters. That's going to be one touch as well. And it's just showing here the cable to a laptop. USB type C, AC it says, and there it is there. So it completely will interact with your PC when you want to connect to things like WSJTX, you know, whatever your thing is, um, is it Winlink and and the Ham Radio Deluxe and there's quite a few programs out there. You've got presets for FTA as well, and or you can have a, a preset that you design so you don't have to keep putting all those digital settings in every time you uh you know you go to use FTA and other other modes. And this is all your, your mag grouping stuff here. Seen this image a few times. Press the mag button. Nice and easy to add memories and to tag memories. VFO memory scanning there. Not sure why that radio is cut in half, but extensive features on scanning. It mentions band stacking. Another image there just showing that you lift the flap to put the SD card in. The gold bit faces towards you. Right, here's some cables now that we've been looking at. We've been talking about this earlier, haven't we? And it's showing the FC40 connected there, look. FC40 has been around for a while. And then we've also got showing the ATS120, 120A as well. That's all there. Antenna 1 and 2. No, oh, look at that. That's your Bluetooth unit. So that's quite a large panel on the side that is removed to clip that in. Look, that's way better. So I was worried about having to remove a load of screws to get that in, but you don't have to. Look, there's the BU6. And it looks like that clips off there, look. And then you just clip it on. Oh, that is good. That is good. And this in this picture, it talks about... Uh, Extension settings, memory clear, if we just go up a bit. Memory clear, all reset, partial reset settings, SD card, my position settings, date, time, and software version, and reset. So I think that's enough for this video, but you know, I know a lot of people are saying it's too much, it's too much, I get it, and they were saying it when the ICOM 705 came out. You know, but you're in new territory here, you're in small devices that do everything, and then they've chucked in this. You could literally throw away all your radios and you'd have nearly everything you like. And if you bought something like an open spot, which cross modes, you'd be able to do DMR and D start as well. And um, so, you know, you are getting a lot here. The only thing I would say is it would have been nice if it went up to 1,300 megahertz <laughs> on receive. Um, that would be nice. And, um, but anyway, thanks very much for watching my channel. Of course, I am just learning. I'm not John Crook. I'm not Yesu. I'm Andreas Tinkering. As I'm teaching myself, as I'm learning myself, you're watching me. That's all that's going on here. Please hit the subscribe if you haven't already. Yes, of course, I'm going to do loads of videos on this. It's going to take me a month to go through every single function on this radio, but it won't be the only thing I'm doing. I always multitask, uh, but it's a fantastic set. And, um, you know, I think you should seriously consider about adding this to your shack. And if you feel like you've got too many radios, sell a couple that you never, ever use. Bye for now, 7-3.